Welcome to Electron Online. Before we start solving systems of linear equations in three variables, we should at least know how to draw something in three dimensions, even though that's necessarily necessary to solve three equations and three unknowns, or systems of linear equations in three variables, but at least it's nice to know what it looks like. So here we have what we would call the general form of a three-dimensional equation, a three-dimensional linear equation that's important. So we can write it like this, ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, c, and d are simply constants. Now the more general form of the equation, it's more like this, ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero, but notice if you take the big D and move it to the right, you get a minus big D and you can just call that a little d. It doesn't really matter. Either way, it's the same equation. And here's an example of what an equation like that could look like. 1x plus 2y plus 1z equals 4. When you see that, you know that it represents a plane in three dimensions. Now, here we have drawn the three-dimensional space, the x-axis, the y-axis forming an x-y plane, and then the z-axis coming perpendicular out of the board. So imagine that the x-y-z plane is the board, and, oh, I'm sorry, the xy plane is the board, and then the z-axis comes straight out. Of course, we draw it at an angle like this so you can see it better. But sometimes in some books and some texts, you'll see something that looks like this, and you wonder, well, why did it put the z-axis this way, the y-axis this way, the x-axis this way? Is that different? The answer is it's exactly the same, just reoriented, and let me show you why. Let's say that we take this and we tip it over like this, so we take the y-axis and we tilt it this way, which takes the z-axis that tilts it up. So now we have the y-axis pointing backwards, like into the board, the x-axis this way, and the z-axis this way, and then if we take the whole thing and turn it, the x-axis x -axis will point out of the board, the y-axis will point this way, and the z-axis will point up, and that means we'll get exactly this situation right here. They are identical, just looking at it from a different perspective. So it depends what book you use. Either you look at it like this, or you look at it like that. I think most algebra books tend to zero in on that. More advanced texts, they tend to zero on something like this. And for example, in the sciences and physics books, you'll see this orientation more instead of that orientation. But be, be uh, rest assured, it's the exact same thing. So now, how do you take this equation and graph it in three-dimensional space? So what you're going to do is you're going to alternately take two of the variables and turn them into zeros to see what the third variable looks like. So let's say we're going to let y equal zero and z equal zero. Well, where is that point, y equals zero, z equals zero? Well, when y equals zero, we're over here, and when z is equal zero, we're over there. So that's in the yz plane, the zero point is right at the origin, but when we do that and we plug it in here, we get zero plus zero, we end up with x equals four. So therefore, x equals four. So when y is equal to zero and z is equal to zero, that means x is equal to four. One, two, three, four, and that's that point over there. So we are in the yz plane equals zero and x equals four. So now we're going to let, let's say, uh, we let y and z equal to zero. How about x and y equal to zero? So x equals zero and y equals zero. When we do that, we get z is equal to four. Okay, so now again, when x and y equals zero, we're talking about right here, and then we move four units in the z direction. So one, two, three, four, and that gives us this point. Now we need one more point. So now, we set y and z equal to zero, x and y, how about x and z? So x equals zero, and z equals zero. When we do that, we get 2y equals four, which means that y equals two. So again, when x and z are equal to zero, then y will be equal to two. One, two, this point right there. So now, rem remember, that's in three-dimensional space, z is pointing outward, so now when we connect those three dots, we connect these dots like this, we connect them like this, and we connect them like this. You can kind of see that we have a plane that slices through the y-axis over here, that slices through the x-axis over there, that slices through the z-axis over here. So you can see that's kind of a, a plane that's tilted this way that cuts through the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And of course, if you imagine that goes outward infinitely, we now have a representation of the plane in three-dimensional space that's associated with that particular 
equation. Again, that's a linear equation in three variables, which represents a plane in three-dimensional space. And that is how it's drawn. Is there a way to take that triangle and make it look like a plane? Ah. I am not good at it. <laughs> My drawing skills aren't there. But uh, let's see, we have a notebook right here, and you can kind of see that it would go on infinitely in this direction, right? It would go infinitely in this direction, it would go infinitely in that direction. So it's kind of like a plane that's slanted inward, that sticks out in the z-axis, sticks out. It's, it's kind of hard to get that visual representation, but yeah, I, I wouldn't try it. If I tried to do that, I probably would fail to try and make it look like an infinite plane, but it's supposed to represent an infinite plane at an angle. <laughs> That's the best I can do. No kidding. <laughs>